Hello besties and welcome to another Genshin Theory! Today's topic is a pretty heavy one, but as Genshin's story goes on, it goes into darker and darker territories. Today we're gonna go over the possible deaths of important characters in Genshin's overall story. Some of these may happen soon, while others may happen years in the future. Either way, we know Hoyoverse isn't afraid to kill off significant characters not only in Genshin, but their other games too. Out of every character on this list, I think Scaramouche is most likely to die first. During the Inazuma Archon quests, Yai gave him A's Gnosis in return for sparing the Traveler's life. This would just be normal Harbinger behavior if it wasn't specifically Scaramouche. We've been over what the Saritsa's goal with the Gnosis is before. She wants to fight Celestia, basically. But Scaramouche has a personal relationship with the Electro Archon. A created Scaramouche to be a puppet that would take her place while she was in the plane of Euthymia, but for some reason Scaramouche was defective so A discarded him. Scaramouche has a grudge against A because of that. In the Labyrinth Warriors event, Child tells us that Scaramouche has cut off contact with the Fatui after taking A's Gnosis. That means the Saritsa never got the Electronosis, which puts her entire plan in jeopardy. We know the Saritsa isn't opposed to using violence to achieve what she wants, so I wouldn't put it past her to hunt down and kill Scaramouche to get the Gnosis. But I don't think being killed by the Saritsa is the only possible way that Scaramouche could die. A's Gnosis isn't his to use. We don't know the consequences of using a Gnosis when it's not yours. I could easily see it backfiring when Scaramouche inevitably tries to use it. Either way, I think next time we see Scaramouche, it'll also be the last time. I really don't see any way out of this situation without him dying. I really don't think we'll see Zhang Li die anytime soon, but I do think it'll happen at some point in the future. We first learned about erosion in Zhang Li's second story quest, which I think has serious narrative implications. On the Genshin Wiki, erosion is described as something that naturally occurs over time and is both caused by and causes the loss of memories. Eventually, it will result in the loss of one's consciousness and sense of self, making them more irritable and suspect to explosive fits of rage. As a result, the more powerful a person is, the more dangerous they become under the effects of erosion. Zhang Li, the current form of the former Geo Archon Morax, indirectly confirms the Traveler's suspicions that erosion was one of his motivations for stepping down from his position. Despite their best efforts, Zhang Li will eventually be affected by erosion. I don't think that'll be soon, but I think that just makes it worse because we'll always be waiting for it. I find it really concerning that it says that a person's power is parallel to the threat they present during erosion. Zhang Li is arguably one of the most powerful people in Tevat, being the oldest living Archon and a war god. When Erosion gets to Zhongli, those explosive fits of rage are going to be a huge problem. It's not like Zhongli is incapable of being super impulsive and violent. The Zhongli we know now is calm and gentle, but thousands of years ago he was the opposite. But Erosion itself doesn't kill you, it basically just ruins your life. <laughs> Think about what happened to Ejdaha. He succumbed to Erosion and because of that he might as well be dead. He's just stuck underground for the rest of time because it would be dangerous if he went above ground and interacted with people. I think something similar could happen to Zhang Li, but because Zhang Li is so much more powerful than Ejdaha, I don't know if stealing them away would be enough. I think that when erosion starts to affect Zhang Li, the only solution will be to kill them. Or Zhang Li may just end up killing himself to protect Liu one last time before erosion completely takes over. It seems like there's a theme of Harbingers dying. Senora died at the end of the Inazuma Archon quest, Scaramouche will probably die next time we see him, and Child has some serious red flags in terms of his survival. Child's real name Ajax comes from Greek mythology. Ajax is a pretty important character who appears in Homer's Iliad in the epic cycle. Ajax fights in the Trojan War alongside his younger brother Teucer and actually survives the war along with the majority of the other Greek soldiers. At the end of it though, Achilles dies. Ajax wants Achilles' armor after his death, but Odysseus wants it too. They fight over it, and Odysseus ends up getting the armor instead of Ajax. Upset by this result, Ajax kills himself. In Genshin, I don't think our Ajax will purposefully kill himself, but I do think he will die at his own hands accidentally. In his story quest, Child tells us that using his delusion takes a serious toll on his body. It's a good thing that you two found me first. Looks like using the foul legacy transformation while I was still injured took more out of me than I thought. If he continues to use it, I could see that killing him. Alternatively, Child's battle-hungry attitude could also be his downfall. If he picks a fight with the wrong person, that may be the last one he ever participates in. Either way, it looks like Child's own actions will be what kills him. This one's a little out there, but our Albedo may already be dead. 
With the other Albedo running around Mondstadt and Dragonspine looking completely identical to our Albedo, we would have no way of knowing. At the end of the Shadows Amidst Snowstorms event story, we saw that the first Albedo learned how to replicate our Albedo's Pontal Mark. Now we have no way of distinguishing which is which. The first Albedo's goal is to replace our Albedo, and since the first one was the last one we saw at the end of the event and we haven't seen Albedo since, I think he may have been successful. Our Albedo could still be perfectly fine though, but there's always a possibility of the first Albedo killing ours and replacing him. Lisa's constellation is named Tempest Fugit, or Time Flies. Compared to other characters' constellation names, Lisa seems out of place. Usually, they have very clear ties to a character's personality or story, or sometimes it's just physical attributes. Dionysus is Phalace, or Cat, because she's literally a cat. Aze is Imperatrix Umbrosa, or Shadow Empress, because she was made as her sister's shadow. The Travelers is Viator, or Viatrix, depending on which sibling you chose, but both literally just translate to Traveler. Time Flies is an odd name for a constellation unless it has some relation to Lisa's story. Her constellation and name card both show hourglasses. The description of her name card is an hourglass marks the end of the workday for Lisa. Its sand moves fast. I know her name card is just talking about work, but I still think the theme of time for Lisa is enough to raise suspicion. So it's likely that Lisa is running out of time, but we don't know exactly what's going to kill her. From her voice lines and story, I think her own vision will turn on her and end up killing her. In her voice line more about Lisa 5, she says, A vision may seem like a great tool, but one day the power one accumulates finds a way to turn on you. Should such a day come for me, so long as you're around, never mind. Hoyoverse is clearly implying that Lisa's vision is putting her in danger. I've actually theorized that owning a vision is a bad thing even though in-game characters seem to think it's good. Vision holders are referred to by the gods as Allogenes. Allogenes have the potential to ascend to Celestia and become gods. But a while back in my Conria series, we talked about how ascending to Celestia may actually not be a good thing. There's a theory that Celestia is actually a jail. I don't know if I 100% believe that theory anymore, but that's a topic for another day. Regardless, it's clear that Ascending to Celestia isn't good given what we know about it so far. A few weeks ago, I talked about how Guizhang's death may have been linked to her knowing too much about Celestia. At some time during the Archon War, Zhang Li's past lover Guizhang died. I could honestly make a whole video about this one situation, but I'll try to condense it for now. It's implied that she died as a result of the war, but keep in mind that Celestia started that war. Guizhang was one of the smartest people to ever live in Tibet, comparable to people like Rindotir. Long before her death, Guizhang gave Zhang Li memory of dust, which, when opened, would reveal everything she knew. As Guizhang was dying, her final words were, As for that stone dumbbell, forget about it, would you? At this current moment, Zhang Li is still unable to unlock it. Honestly, I think that's for the best. Guizhang was one of the most intelligent people in Tavat's entire history. If anyone were to learn the truth about Celestia, it would be her. I actually made a whole video about what Celestia does to people who know too much. Long story short, they execute them. We don't know Guizhong's exact cause of death, but we do know two things about it. She died during the Archon War, and the Archon War was started because of Celestia. I think it's entirely possible that she was killed by Celestia for knowing too much, but she only realized that as she was dying. That's why the last thing she ever said was forget about that dumbbell to Zhang Li. She didn't want him to be killed by Celestia in the same way that she was. Lisa and Guizhong are both regarded as the smartest people of their respective times. If anyone were to die in a similar fashion to Guizhong, it would be Lisa. It seems like Lisa knows that she shares Guizhong's fate, too. Lisa wished for a vision and then got one. With her new vision, she was able to learn anything she wanted. But we know that in Tavat, knowledge comes with a really heavy price. In her story, it literally says Lisa is scared of the truth. I think that's because she knows that if she learns too much, she'll die, just like Weizhang did thousands of years ago. There's actually some other characters I wanted to include in this video, but it's such a sad topic, so I really didn't want to make it any longer than I had to. I had two other characters that were originally supposed to be in this video, so guess who they are in the comments, and I'll pin the first comment to get both of them right. And Kokomi's reruns just started, so I hope polls are going well for everyone wishing for them. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, besties!